Oh god, this hat smells rank. Gross. This is like my very first, very <laughs> first snapback, and I don't think I've ever washed it. So gross. <laughs> How do you? I mean, you wash a hat, it's gonna be ruined. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. This is the Glacier Gamble podcast episode something. And today we're going to talk to you about episode six of Secret Invasion. Episode six being the finale. Uh, episode six times two is 12. That's basically the percentage it has on Rotten Tomatoes, which is 13. <laughs> and about the um, amount of episodes it probably should have as a Disney Plus series. But Yeah. Oh. Um, it's just like, let's get it out of the way. It is not a 13%. People are talking about it. It's like it's the worst MCU show ever. Uh, I disagree. In my opinion, the one I've enjoyed the least is She-Hulk. Sure. Um, or What If. Yeah, yeah. I, I would have to agree with that. I thought I'd like both. I think, I think the, see, She-Hulk, I'm more tied to She-Hulk because it is part of the MCU. Whereas What If, it's just like random scenarios that could happen yeah. not necessarily tied to the mcu at all what if was the same as like multiverse of madness where the hype for it was kind of more exciting than what the final result actually was sure but secret invasion let's talk about that the finale had some implications about the future of the mcu the past of the mcu and uh kind of what's gonna go on in the immediate mcu sure. and uh in my opinion this show was about nick fury Sure. Just, like he's the main character it's not necessarily like fury and gaia the guy was right. definitely supporting so i thought i thought this was about fury so the most important things to me in my opinion were the fury storyline the vara storyline and like the gaia is kind of like second sure. fiddle to me i so saw i saw something in regards to um fury dealing with gravic and it was like um, the, essentially the thing was Fury can't even take out the villain in his own show um, and for, like I get that but like what is Fury going to do to Gravik who's a super scroll already like mm -hmm. he's got Extremis and Frost Beast and Cull Obsidian and Flora Colossus in him already like so what is Fury going to be able to do to graphic in the grand scheme of things like is he gonna shoot him in the head that'd be a people would complain all you did was shoot him in the head that's so boring right, right. or like if fury got like special powers they'd be like fury doesn't have special. they'd find a way to make it like negative so mm -hmm. um in regards to that i think actually the finale did a good job of kind of splitting gaia and um fury their own separate kind of missions themselves mm -hmm. i thought that did a good good job of that too i think so. so our goal today for those of you listening and watching our goal today we wanted to focus on the positive side of it because we enjoyed it we both figured it was roughly for those that just want to hear a rating this was like a six out of ten yeah i thought six or seven is fair seven does feel a little high but yeah. six means it's probably about average or above average I thought it was good. Probably not one. We mentioned it last week. Probably not one I'll watch a second time. Sure. I mentioned how last week the best the best Disney shows or Disney Plus Marvel shows so far have I've watched multiple times like Loki and WandaVision. I think that this one has maybe two episodes that I'd consider watching again, but for the most part I wouldn't. I would rewatch the finale simply so I could pause to see every single name that they sure. put on the harvest. Right, but you mentioned the ones the that they have. Yeah, the ones, yeah, they, the have. ones they have. Because they don't have Doctor Strange, they don't have Wanda in there, and that's because they're magic users. Their DNA is human, still human. Wanda I guess, would be a right. mutant, right? Right, mute. She would have different DNA, but it, not enough to like. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you can't you can't bottle up chaos magic. You know what I mean? Right. So I, that doesn't. Whatever, but, but I think some of the positive sides of it. One big one is Kingsley Benadir. Oh, yeah. yeah. He we was... mentioned it in, like, every episode so far. He is one of the best villains that we've had. The fact that they killed him was actually super disappointing. You sure. had to because you couldn't have somebody with that right. of, out there. Mindset, right. He just like, murdered his own. He wanted. He had his own goal in mind, and he actually was just using the scrolls as, like, his pawns. Um, right. He didn't right. really care about them at all. But And Nick Fury wasn't going to kill him. Everybody wanted it, couldn't kill him in his own show. Nick, 
Fury. So when they take over the skin of somebody else, they do kind of know the memories, correct? The scrolls. They they sh- they sh- well they do when they're like zapped. Oh, just when there's okay um, because he is like graphic is like a son to him. He was sure. his first scroll that he right. hired, and he was like a young kid when they took him in. Right, he had him he do some him as a child, sh- some shady shit too. Like he right. had. Some spy and as stuff. we prove by the end of the series, when he kisses Zavara in her scroll form, right. shows that he doesn't view scrolls as a separate race, sure. whatever. He views them as family. So that you're asking Fury to kill his son. Right. And Talos was like a brother to him, too. Ex- yeah. Right? So, so Gaia, he views as yeah. a daughter of his own. As someone he's got to kind of protect himself yeah. if he can so yeah so i he's not gonna he wasn't gonna do that if you thought fury was gonna kill gravik you missed the point of the show right where maybe maybe even old fury would have killed gravik right but fury has gone soft however they get they sold him he was soft multiple times he still has the ability to do what it needs to be done but he is still human and still like he feels emotion towards the scrolls just like he got pissed at the president because the president in this episode says he's gonna kill the scrolls and fury got yeah i mean that 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 was like you said earlier in regards to it leads into like future implications of the mcu this moment like this finale and like the ritson speech at the end um first of all he's had like hitmen killing people who he thinks are scrolls and people who are who are scrolls so he's out there hiring hitmen to kill like people like real like real like some people that were shot in the like final scenes or whatever um like the mad paranoia hysteria like were they didn't change back to scrolls so like he's killing people who he thinks are scrolls right and that's himself is causing the paranoia around everything which i but, think is a good direction to show where why ritson's not going to be president they right and said, that's mean, a one-term president so i mean moves. yeah <laughs> and that's that you know president thunderbolt ross like is gonna come in there and be like he's like a war like no nonsense guy um yeah and so he's gonna people are gonna like rally behind him and you're gonna get that you know harrison ford as president of the united states thunderbolt ross yeah i think you're um, gonna i think harrison ford because you know actors kind of do a lot of studying of roles maybe look at historical figures that had a similar thing or fictional figures that they want to kind of emulate i think harrison ford's thunderbolt ross is going to be very dwight eisenhower like sure. he had the whole we like ike we like ike commercials he where he was kind of like enthusiastic even though he was a military vet sure and he was viewed as no nonsense he's gonna get the job done i think he's going to be a very like He's gonna, you're gonna, if you could watch old videos of Eisenhower and then you're gonna watch Thunderbolt Ross, I think you're gonna see a lot of similarities. You're gonna, but go ahead. I was gonna, I was gonna say, um, you've got kind of this like evil ragtag team. Um, you've got Val, who's I believe CIA. Yep. Is that right? She's the CIA. So she's the lead, head of the CIA. She's got super powered individuals working for her. Mm-hmm. Um, John Walker, Yelena Belova. Uh, I mean, there could be Zemo. It could be Abomination. I guess I don't. I don't know who else in that mix. But you know that the leader is coming back as well in in that Falcon uh, or Captain America: Brave New World. So like, you've got the leader who's very smart and smart, intelligent person. Val, who's just like criminal mastermind, and then a powerful figure in the government with. Uh, Thunderbolt Ross and all this is against like Sam Wilson's Captain America so like I'm very interested to see that avenue shape out too. Sure um, again still focusing on the positive um, another person that I thought their storyline stood out they were introduced in this series um, and it was really kind of integral at the end to their coming back with Gaia uh, uh Sonya Olivia Coleman, so- Sonya Fallsworth, she killed it every yeah. episode. She killed it. Yes, I do think maniacal or like um kind of smart ass, straight to the point characters 
can sometimes be a little easier for actors to tap into, but she did it perfectly. Sure. Like I thought that character was super like every time she was on the screen, I watched her just because you didn't know what she was gonna do next. Right. It was kind of like a wild card. She just she, she was good. Really she was good at the end of the end of things. She was good. Yeah. Right. Like, um, but she also like how I interpreted it is it it is that she also has scrolls working for her. Is that right? Like she has, she has all those some people in more than pods? just scrolls. I think. Sure. I think she has like, more than just scrolls. So here's the thing about uh the um there's mi mi thirteen I believe or mi six is like a a secret division um, based in the UK uh, in regards to like a like secret special ops. Um, so Sonia Fallsworth could be heading that group. Um, it's got sure. the likes of probably Gaia, right? Like Gaia yep. could be part of that team. Um, bigger names like uh, Captain Britain and Union Jack, as well as Dane Whitman's Black Knight and Blade. Um, so all that kind of being said, there's a small group of heroes that we've kind of seen already in regards to like Dane Whitman and Blade are kind of, they're in Europe, probably in some museum or whatever, but Sonya Fallsworth knows about them. Now you're adding in Gaia. Um, you could get Captain Britain in there. You could have this like team as well that Sony Fallsworth could be building. So that's a cool storyline. I have a hair in my mouth. Nice. Where's it from? I don't know. Small, short, kind of stubby. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So I, I, Sony, uh, Olivia Coleman's character was another Kingsley Benadier, Olivia Coleman. They've like those are two positives we've. And I think her name was Charlene Woodward. Woodward. I think that's Vara. The actress plays Vara. Sure. She also did a very good job. She reminded me a lot of the um, the Oracle in the original Matrix. Her delivery of lines yeah. was just it was just very straightforward, articulate in the way that yeah, I was gonna say composed. Yeah, very, yeah. very, very good. And yeah, I know a lot of people are kind of crapping on this show. I have yet to see a valid reason for it, to be honest. Everybody is like kind of saying, oh, it's it's so bad. It was so meh. But the people that are actually saying why they don't like it, I have yet to hear a actual reason. Like, oh, the writing was bad. Well, what in the right? Like, what didn't you like right. about the writing? Because the interaction between Gravik and Fury, Fury during the end there, when Kingsley Benadire was like, you could hear the emotion in his voice when he yeah. like grabs Fury's face and he's that writing is fantastic. It may just be a small part of one show, one episode of the whole show, but giving it a score like 13%, you're telling me this show has nothing redeemable about right. it. Right. When right. just that scene alone was redeemable. The fight scene was cool. I didn't, I'm not a big fan of the way their powers work. Sure, I think the CGI was a little wonky. It was very much Disney Plus CGI, not um, yeah. Like it was a little, a little CGI. wonky. In in the, okay, so a lot of people are getting mad when uh, when Gaia like or the Gravik does like a Groot arm, and then he does like a Cole Obsidian arm, and then yeah. Guy does like the Drax arm. I wouldn't mind seeing that arm be freaking massive on her, right? Like Drax is way bigger in comparison to Gaia. Yeah, and so like if she were to hypothetically, if she she were to shape shift into Drax, she would grow in size. Yeah, right. So why isn't that arm just huge? And Gaia would just have like this massive arm. It looked I awkwardly big. Like it was still bigger than her normal arm, but it was right. awkwardly big to the point where it's like, wait, did they just make her look like She Hulk, where it's just kind of more buff, right. as opposed to massive? Because Drax right. would be taller, wider. Yeah, I mean, uh, Amelia Clark's what, like, I don't know, 5'2? Like, she can't be that. Like, Drax is, you know what? 6'5, maybe? I don't know. Like, uh, but... Amelia Clark height. I hate when they do that. Okay, if 5'2 is what uh, she's I listed think I, at think that's online, what I saw. that yeah. might not, you know, obviously we don't know how accurate that is, but 5'2, you know? Right. Still so... taller than my mom. Right, <laughs> <laughs> and then what? Bless uh, her Dave heart. Bautista. Dave Bautista. 
not six five, but I mean Drax is probably scaled up. Right. Drax you would assume is scaled up. You could assume that her character might be he's six four. Oh, that's not, that was close on six five. Look <laughs> so, at that. Look so at yeah, that. Her, arm, her arm, his arm would look way more awkward. Should have. It, it 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 should have not looked so fluid. Right. How weirdly, how weird that sounds. Yeah, because I mean, how big is arm? her shoulder compared to like a Drax shoulder? You know right. what I mean? So it should look yeah, like the CGI a was a little weird here. <laughs> yeah, um, I am like w- with the way they're going in the future. I think there's a lot of ways to cut back the super scroll in her. Yeah. Um, whether that's you know want to go the mutant route and go and like if you rogue can put it in or something, you can probably take it out. Right. So right. if you can so, put in the harvest, they can probably find a way to take out the harvest. Exactly. Exactly. So. I'm not too worried about that. I think Captain Marvel would still clear her. Um, Cause I don't think like she's got the DNA, but I can't imagine it's like as close to the pure thing. Right. You know what I mean? So like if, if, if Gaia is Captain Marveled out, um, here's another thing. I guess I didn't. I didn't really understand that. Is she was just straight up like she was Captain Marvel, right? But she was like full binary at the moment, and yeah. like Captain, I don't feel like she shouldn't have been able to go like binary. Like maybe shoot blast, but like not full binary like Captain Marvel does. I but thought anyway, it was really weird. I thought that was really weird too. Like even like eyes lit up and everything. yeah, like full was, Super Saiyan. Like yeah. yeah, it was very strange. I didn't think that she'd have full access like that. They made it seem as though. She has full powers of every single person that was there. Yeah, yeah. I I don't know about necessarily. I don't think it's as strong as like the main thing. I guess and that's how theory, I perceive it. She also it. wouldn't be able to have like the power of Thor. Right. She wouldn't have yeah, the power no of his lightning or anything because she wouldn't be able to wield Mjolnir because she's still not. She's not him. It's right. She he's a him. god. He's right. not. It's not like his powers come from his blood. His powers come from a higher un uh, like non understandable power right yeah thor's the strongest person we have we have so yeah. there's no like he clears a stormbreaker um mm-hmm. but next thing i guess next thing would be the whole rody thing and... uh i think he the that scroll got desperate because gravik was threatening him made it he kind of lost control where the normal rody wouldn't have but the big thing with Rhodey is that they revealed how long he has been. Yeah, but they but a lot of people are saying it's since Civil War, and I don't believe that. Because the last time we saw him in a hospital gown was during Civil War. Right. But so that's what he was he had his trapped. he had his leg braces in Infinity War and in Endgame, but he did not have them in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Right. When he was there. He did not have his leg braces. Nobody noticed that. Nobody noticed. Rhodey just miraculously survived. Like, his legs are fine. Right. Yeah. Where he needed help being carried out. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. I don't think it, it... There's no way... There's no way Rhodey's been scrolled since Civil War. No. Nope. I don't think there's a chance since nah, then. I don't think so either. I think it happened after Endgame. Uh, where maybe he was just getting a test done and he got swapped out in a in a thing. He was because he was in a hospital gown still. But uh, there's no way that uh, there's no way that a scroll would fight for Earth like that, like life or death fight for Earth. At so, the time, Nick Fu- they were still on Nick Fury's side because they went and fought for Earth by collecting all those samples. Right? Yeah, uh, yeah. I, 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 I still don't. I. S- I still don't know. They if... would have been fighting for him time. The difference is they wouldn't have had Rhodes but, captured yeah. at the time. They, yeah. they weren't going up against Fury at the time. So if Rhodes wouldn't exactly. have been... So like, why would they impersonate him just to potentially die for right. like, like he wouldn't be, they wouldn't be impersonating a high government official, like a colonel, direct response to the president. And then just like, Oh, this is just part of the plan. Let's play along for a little bit. Yeah. Like Thanos, like or like when he got when like Sam got snapped, like Rava, if Rava was still the one portraying like Rhodey, wouldn't be like, Sam, 
Sam, like wouldn't care about Sam getting dusted. You know what I mean? So, right. So that people are like, this has been since civil war. I don't think so. I think it was after end game is probably when it happened Mm -hmm. while everyone's trying to like get things together and get their lives back together. If they're trying to tell us that it's been since Civil War, that's just a miscalculation. But it's kind of like the whole how the one of the writers on Frozen said that Tarzan is Elsa and Anna's yeah, brother. But right. timeline wise, and the like, the family died. We found on the second one, like in the water anyway. So there's no way, right? The son, like their son, Tarzan, could be their son. Just it wouldn't make sense. That was another one of those times they were just trying to give the fans what they were asking for. Sure. If they're trying to tell us that it's been since Civil War, that's just a huge miscalculation by them, which is why I don't think it's since Civil War, just because right. it doesn't make any sense. I all. know. And hopefully we find out exactly when in Armor Wars. Mm-hmm. Like, I hope there's some kind of there's some kind of thing. Because like I'm after watching Don Cheadle in this portrayed by or like Rava taking control of Don Cheadle, but Don Cheadle acting. Um, even from like the post, like the, like not post credit scene, but afterwards where like him and Everett Ross were taken, like just it, the acting by Don Cheadle throughout this entire <laughs> series has been insane. We talked about that last week. I talked about it with my wife off camera. Yeah. I, we talk about it now. He is one of the greatest actors of all time from Every he has done such a variety of roles and just like Hotel Rwanda to MCU, like from right. back then to now, it's just such a variety. Even within the MCU, he went from like a character that had some comedy to a character that was like the straight lace guy right. to the villainous character. He plays everything, but now you're gonna get him so in, a, well. in a lead. Now you're gonna get him in a lead role with Dominique Thorne's Ironheart. Who's like a little snappy and firecracky, but Don Cheadle's got like a little, like, not thug to him too. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know what yeah. I'm trying to say it, but like a little bit like he's got like bravado. He was... He's got some cockiness. He's, he's right. Yeah. Um. And so, and now you're gonna get so she's just this college kid that been doing things her own way, and now you got someone who's like a high government authority, and it's gonna be like a very serious environment. Mm-hmm. Then you got uh. Justin Hammer coming back, who's very funny and like, I don't know. I I can't wait. I can't for that. wait. To Armor it. Wars Speaking is going to be a blast of the future of the MCU. The show ended with Fury going to Saber, right? He's he's going to go up to Saber with Vara, and then Vara's coming back. She right, they're going to deal with a scroll diplomatic meeting. Right, she's yeah, she's going to be the different from scroll crew. Yeah, scroll. Yeah, uh, yep. So Kree and scroll are meeting for meeting peace. Uh, highly, I don't think that's likely. I don't think that's going to end well. I think that's going to be part of the reason why there's a future movie is because that's probably not going to go well. Yeah. Um. So they went to Saber, Gaia and Sonya make a partnership that they are going to use each other. Gaia made a comment that. Or they made a comment. This is not going to be about friendship. This is not going to be about re- relationship. Right. That's where Talos and Fury went wrong. We're just going to use each other. So right. those two went off on their own. That tells me if she's willing to hire a scroll, that's why I think she has other people. Just kind of like Kingpin, but she's like a good guy Kingpin. So she's sure. willing to do the wrong thing. But instead, her end goal is kind of more on the brighter side as opposed to Kingpin. Who, right. His end goal is still more about. I think there's a, like you use the term straight edge path. I think that if there's a straight edge path, she's willing to go like here along it to eventually reach the same thing. So I think that's the play. And I hope, I hope that there is a, uh, I hope there is like possibly like that, that team up, I guess. Um, I know that if Blade gets his own movie and I know there's Mahershala Ali, whatever, I'm still hoping that comes together. I think it will. I think it's just kind of like miscommunication out there from other random parties, but Mm -hmm. Mahershala Ali will get a Blade Mm -hmm. movie. I think Dane Whitman will be in it a little bit uh, because obviously they had that interaction at the end of Eternals. So I think Dane Whitman will be in it a little bit, then he'll go off and do his thing. And then I think Sony Fallsworth could pick him up too. Cause I think, um, there's going to be like Val's Val's group with the CIA. There could be Sonya's group. Um, 
I don't know. I don't know. I think the, they set up a lot of future trails. So that the was the, the kind of like overall succinct thesis, whatever you want to call it, that I had about secret innovation. But it's the same. This it's the same issue every other show has had. But every other show did a like every other show had did a really good job of being its own standalone show. But every MCU product on Disney Plus has still been. This feels like you're kind of like what we said about episode five. Felt like it was a setting up six. Three felt like it was setting up four. Sure. All the show, the show feels like a setup for the Marvels and Armor Wars. Armor Wars. Sure. Armor Wars. Car- um, Carmel Wars. Carmel Wars. Oh, I would be in that <laughs> so fast. I'd be on the side of Carmel, hundred yeah. percent. Um. <laughs> So she's yeah, good. This is a setup for the Marvels and Carmel Wars. And <laughs> She Hulk, similar, felt like a setup for the Daredevil show. It didn't even sure. feel like a setup for its own thing. Sure. It's, so there's like the, the couple more recent projects have a hard time standing on their own merit. And the finale of this just kind of felt that way. Like sure. it is the purpose of this finale was to create Gaia the super scroll sure. was to get Nick Fury back on saber and to create a love story for him as well, which sure. was, I don't care. That was my favorite part. Uh, my sure. favorite part of Fury this show and, was, uh, Fury, was and Vara, sure. Fury and Vara was the, the show was about Nick Fury. Nick Fury isn't Nick Fury without Vara. They were awesome. The acting was awesome. The story was awesome. I loved it. So that was my favorite part about the show, but it still feels like they're trying to set up for the future. And I definitely think Vara's probably dead in the Marvels. She's in some way, shape, or form, yeah. Yeah, I think she may be in the movie, but I think at some point she is killed. Because that is a character they've they basically covered her whole story arc in this show. Yeah. And she's still alive. Right. That is a very kill offable character, which I hate because I don't normally we we don't normally bring this sort of stuff up, but Marvel apparently has people have issues with it because they often kill off female characters. They've killed off more female important characters than they've killed off male. Sure. And people are very upset about it because they want it a little bit more equal. And this is just another main character that has a relationship. If you're more likely to kill Fury or Vara. I mean, just in this episode alone, you knew Gravik was, or not episode, I mean, in the series alone, you knew Gravik was probably not going to make it out of the series. Yep. Um, we predicted well, you said Talos's, that. we predicted Talos's probable death. That's going to get Gaia back on the side. Yep. Uh, didn't ex- really expect the Maria Hill thing. Um, so that being said, like, Talos and Maria Hill cancel out each other. Gravik, we knew it was going to happen. Um, Vara, question mark. Yeah. Um, and so it was kind of a wash for this this one, but like I know what you mean. Like Yeah, well, and I think that's they killed off Maria Hill, which got a lot of people upset right away. Right. You have a likable actor, likable character, and you killed off another female lead. The Talos one upset other people because it's like you kill him at such a hard point, but again, you have sometimes you have to do that just to make a better story, which again this show did not have a bad story. I, I... for the for, <laughs> for also for the other people that uh, just for the people that are saying like are getting mad at Marvel for killing off female characters. We have gotten so many female characters this like since Endgame, and they kick ass. It's insane. <laughs> Photon, She Hulk, uh, Miss Marvel, uh, Miss Marvel, um, Sylvie. Like it's I don't know. I, and I know it's Gaia, not technically MCU, like, but Gwen Stacy from Spider Verse. Right. Like you've gotten all the female representation, strong, powerful females. So like, if you don't like what they're doing by killing off these females, like go try to accept the other ones. Yeah, because like they also kick ass. That's yeah, like we've there's gonna be some ones coming up that are gonna kick ass that haven't. I skip Scarlet. Uh, beetle or what's it uh scarlet Silver, Scar- uh, scarlet scarab scarab thank you yeah, oh, yeah. i was trying to think yeah. beetle scarlet yeah. scarab the coolest one of them all yeah yeah <laughs> she's, like, she's badass too yeah. so badass so 
yes, it is disappointing when they do kill more female characters. It does if it does feel like a target, an easy target, taking advantage of something rather than writing a more difficult death scene for killing off maybe a male character. But like you said, try focusing on the positive, just like we're trying to do with this show. Yes, we didn't say it was the best show. I would say it's probably the third worst. What if and She Hulk are the only shows I would probably sure. put below it. I did. Yeah, like- yeah. I think I think what we try to do is we try to look at the series as a whole and find the high points. Yeah. Um, and like talk about those high points. And I think She Hulk had higher high points at times than this series. But I also think She Hulk had lower low points. Mm-hmm. So She Hulk's um, pilot episode is one of the better episodes of a Marvel show. That pilot episode is better than most of Falcon and the Winter Soldier, most of Hawkeye. But then again, those shows throughout the whole thing, like also there's another one we did Echo. Kate, Kate Bishop. And Kate, Kate Bishop. Bishop. <laughs> so. Yelena Belova. Yeah. Yeah. And Yelena's gonna be the lead in Thunderbolts. Yeah. I, so there's there there's gonna be a lot. But that pilot episode was probably better than a lot of the shows. Loki's still my favorite. Yeah, I think Loki, Loki didn't finale. have a bad episode. Right. The worst episode was probably like the two before the finale or the, the sure. one where they kind of go through that city and ride the train and he gets drunk. Yeah, yeah. That was probably the worst episode of them all, of Loki. And even then, wasn't bad. Sure. Um, and that's that one had the best writing because it was in the works the longest. Uh, uh, Scott Lang's, Scott Lang's daughter. Too, Stature. Stature, yeah. I forgot her name. Cassie. Cassie Lang. Yeah, Cassie yeah. Lang. No, so, which version? Uh, love, Thor, Love and Thunder. <laughs> love is in it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Natalie Portman's Thor. Like I don't know. There's there's a lot of good, <laughs> and there's, there's going to still good. be when when yeah. X Men comes out. If yeah. you don't think Storm, Jean Grey, yeah. Kitty Pride, Mystique, Rogue, if you don't think yeah. they're all gonna kick ass, then you're not paying attention either, right? Because there's gonna be a lot of both. There's gonna be a lot of strong male and female characters coming out. Overall, like we said, six out of ten. It could have been better. It needed a couple more episodes so that we could get a little bit more in-depth storytelling. So that way we could wrap up some, we could tie some loose ends. We don't sure. need shows to end with a whole bunch of loose ends tied. I think that's where Marvel is disconnecting with fans right now. Is they think that fans want a whole bunch of story building from the show itself. When it's like, no, 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 we need you to give it, give that all to us in one product. We need to, yeah, we need to have direct uh, on the loose ends. We need to have a direction where those are going to lead. So, like Fury going to Saber, we know that's going to lead directly into the like the Marvels. We know where right. that loose end is going to go. But now we have no idea when we're going to see Olivia Coleman and Gaia again. Zero You're right. clue. I uh, expected to see Shang Chi in some form or another by this point yeah, again. Yeah, we to haven't be honest. seen him and like. I, <laughs> Yeah, in the Marvels, uh, uh, I f- I forget who it is, but Tom Hiddleston's wife or fiance is the evil person in the Marvels, Zawe okay. Ashton. Zawe Ashton. Okay. That that sounds right. Um, hopefully I pronounce that right. But she's I got. Like, I was Tom Hiddleston's bangles. wife. You want to be? I yeah. That's okay. why. I mean, so that I was just there was a bad was a Loki episode. You're just. <laughs> glossed over like it's just it's just i mean i did get you this for a reason tom hiddleston is awesome yeah him and cillian murphy and me in the middle (laughs) (laughs) that'd be great no yeah so she's got like bangles too like uh kamala has so we'll see uh we'll see if that all kind of ties together Um, yeah we'll see Unfortunately, we didn't get to know a whole bunch of tied loose ends. We mentioned how we wanted it, that the show was kind of riding on this finale. I think the finale did hit exactly where, which is why 13%, if you want to call it, I effort, guarantee you're saying you, that this whole show was that. I disagree. I guarantee you it's like a 70 or 80% this episode if uh, Quake shows up because people, that's what everyone wanted. Mm-hmm. I guarantee you if at the end it was like Fury. Or like they go up into the saber thing, and it's like Fury. Here's the report. When they when the like door that. came down, and they showed like the inside or whatever, when it kind of it looked like there was a moment where like door came down, you could see the inside. 
I 100% was like, is this where they're going to have somebody walk up and be like, Fury, we're ready. Yeah. Fury, let's get going. Yeah. And is that where it was going to happen? Even, yeah. If they did something like that, people immediately go, outside of that, it was a terrible show. But yeah. they brought in Daisy John. Like, right. Again, that's one of those ones where fans don't necessarily know what they want. Sometimes fan service isn't necessarily what's best. I guarantee we're going to get a lot of tremendous cameos in the future. We didn't get them now. We got I one. Still... We got we got one. I mean the 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 dude from Black Widow. Like yeah, yeah I mean that good. that was like I was like oh cool like I, all right like we got we they brought somebody kind of relevant into sure. into the mix. So uh, but. Yeah. It's. I thought it was good. I think if you like Marvel, you should like it. If you don't like Marvel, this is not one of those shows I think that's good for everyone. Um, I think this is just one of those, just for Marvel fans, really. And that's probably going to hurt them a little bit, because yeah. when it's only for Marvel fans, but you write it to try to make it so everybody enjoys it, the Marvel fans enjoy it less, and the other fans aren't going to watch it. Um. I think the whole show overall, six out of 10 final sure. episode, also a six out of 10. Sure. It was just slightly above average or average, yeah. but there was a lot of high points. The yeah. acting was awesome. The CGI might have been rough, but the amount of talented actors in secret invasion carried the show from start to end. Don Cheadle from to Olivia Coleman to Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah. Benedict, uh, Benedict King, uh, blah, blah, blah. Kingsley, Kingsley Benedier. Benedier. Ben Gosh. Mendelsohn. Yeah, there was so there were so many good ones. So they all carried it. And if you didn't like it, that's too that's too bad. I really hope you like the Marvels because I see a lot of people thinking this is where Marvel's gonna die. Marvel's dying. Whatever. It's I it's don't not. listen to those people. It's not for it's not for you. It's right. not made for you. It's made for me. It's made for made for you. It's and the, you know what else is made for you and us and people watching this? This right here. This show. Right. Uh, for those of you that are watching, please like, share, comment, subscribe. We're, I'm, let's see if I can get up to this at the end. You all look great today. GG! Don't want to sleep in because I got something to prove. I got to take what I hate and finally make a move. I think of you and... All the shit you don't do Well, I'ma make hella sure that I don't become you I have no regrets, yeah, I'm tired of my chest, oh, no.